Today we'll be talking about uh, what sharefests are and how you can organize one in your own town. Now, as I mentioned in the chat box, um, that is where you can type in your questions for, your, for the speakers while the webinar is going. And at the end of this webinar, we will be having a Q&A session where I'll be pulling questions from the chat box to uh, ask our speakers today. So please do utilize the chat box and uh, network with each other. Okay, so before we begin, I wanted to talk a little bit about Center for a New American Dream and what we do before we get going. So Center for a New American Dream is a nonprofit organization. We um, have a mission statement, which you can see on the screen, and that is that this, the Center for a New American Dream helps Americans to reduce and shift their consumption to improve quality of life, protect the environment, and promote social justice. Our three program areas are redefining the dream, beyond consumerism, and collaborative communities. We really want to help to shape a new American dream, one that is not focused on consumerism and shopping, and one towards things that truly matter, which is community building, um, strong relationships and resilience, and simplifying. So today's webinar is part of our Collaborative Communities program, and we're very excited to be partnering with Shareable to talk about ShareFests and how po people can promote sharing in their communities. And later on uh, today, we'll be hearing from Anna Awimbo, who is also a staff member at New Dream, and she will talk specifically about our Get Together program and how people can get involved with that. So today, we have three great speakers who are going to be talking about ShareFest. First, we have Tom Llewellyn. And Tom is uh, the network coordinator at Shareable. He coordinates the International Sharing Cities Network and ShareFest Initiative. He's the co-founder of The Real Cooperative, He's a partner in the Asheville Tool Library and Share Asheville, and was the Education and Activism Director for Sustainable Living Roadshow, where he produced events from coast to coast. And Tom is going to be uh, representing Shareable today and giving you an overview about what Sharefests are and how you can get involved. Then we will have Angela Muleman, uh, who is uh, hailing from Belgium, and he's involved in uh, different national and European projects with a focus on ride sharing and car sharing, and members of the Flemish Advisory Board for Transport. He's a connector for We Share Flanders and has worked with Taxi Stop to co found ShareFest Ghent and ShareFest Antwerp. Our third speaker today is Ryan Gourley. He is uh, the founder of A2 Share in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And he's worked with a small group of volunteers to host the first annual Ann Arbor Sharing Summit which happened last summer, bringing together representatives from 25 organizations and featured open space breakout groups on sharing as a business, sharing food, sharing the arts, sharing living spaces, and much more. So welcome to Tom and Angelo and Ryan. We'll have a chance to hear all three of them talk about their experiences with ShareFest, and I hope you will find uh, some inspiration from, from what they have to say. So first to kick it off, we are going to have uh, Tom uh, represent Share, uh, Shareable and give us an overview about what ShareFests are um, and um, how people can get involved and have a ShareFest in their own community. So with that, Tom, if you can unmute yourself and take it away, we'll get going. Oh, forgot about that unmuting thing. I started already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so hello everybody, thank you so much for joining this call. Um, like like uh, she said, I am with Shareable and we are excited to be partnering with the new Center for New American Dream on the ShareFest initiative. And just a little bit about Shareable, for the last few years Shareable has been the go-to for the evolving sharing movement, offering news, actions, and a connection hub primarily. In addition to our regularly viewed website and articles, we also send out a weekly best of digital magazine and are developing the Sharing Cities Network. And the Sharing Cities Network is something we're really excited about and something that we hope is going to be strengthened by the ShareFest initiative. Um, and really what it is, is a, it's a grassroots network for sharing innovators, knitting together a community of local sharing movements. Participants will be people just getting started in sharing as well as those founding, leading, and participating sharing projects. Um, and this network is going to be decentralized 
but it, uh, and or the, the coordinators of it will be de decentralized and, and we're going to be kind of as shareable providing the hub for it and it's every single city is going to be able to have the opportunity to have their own kind of specific hub for the for the sharing economy that people can go to and if people are traveling you can you're going to be able to look up and find out everything that's going on and and really um, travel like a local um, as far as the sharing movement goes and in order to do this um, we're going to be scaling up and replicating successful sharing models by increasing collaboration between sharing projects spreading best practices among members catalyzing new sharing projects and ultimately leading cr uh, creating complete sharing cities Last year, this network was seeded by the nearly 60 community mapping events, also known as map jams, that took place all over the world where communities came together to map out their sharing, sharing resources. Mapping was a great first step, and many groups are, have kind of continued working together and on new initiatives and actions and events uh, launching this spring. And this movement as a whole is kind of uh, been coined as, as the sharing spring, or you pound sharing spring. And we are encouraging everyone to join the sharing spring in their own way, in a, in a way that you, know, th you think best serves your community. Um, it doesn't really belong to anybody. It belongs to everyone. Shareable and friends are just kind of putting a name to what we already see happening in order to catalyze even more independent action. Um, so feel free to use that hashtag as you see fit. Um, and one way that, that Shareable and Center for New American Dream are getting involved with support um, with the sharing spring is by supporting and coordinating these share fests um, and so I really I thank you all for kind of joining us in this in this process as we're all kind of working together and and going to be shaping how this looks um, around in the United States but also around the world groups are all coming together um, and so share fest as a whole they're kind of focused on the transformational experience of, of sharing. These events will be co-created by local sharing organizations and the public. Um, you know, whole communities coming together um, in these participatory events, which are designed to connect your local sharing economy. Um, and these events are—they're not necessarily going to be huge. Sometimes they're going to be small. They can range from, you know, intimate 20-person events uh, hosted by community organizations like time banks to much larger three-day public gatherings with over 3,000 people, um, as we're seeing in, in Paris with WeShare, um, you know, and others, you know, in ShareFest Ghent, which you're going to hear from a lot more, um, you know, had 3,000 people come through last year. And so these events can be very, very large, um, but we don't want everyone to, to feel like you have to do that. Every single one is going to be very specific to your community and to, um, you know, those that are participating in it. And one of the reasons why we've chosen to really push the ShareFest is that they really are the perfect opportunity to bring people together who are interested in sharing and excited to create a sharing city together. And for newbies, you know, a ShareFest can be a great introduction. It's one thing to read about the sharing economy, but another to experience how rich life can be living it in the first hand. Um, if your city is already on its way to becoming a sharing city, a vibrant ShareFest helps show that everyone involved is part of a bigger movement and aren't working you know, alone um, on their initiatives, but it's all kind of part of the greater mesh. So one of the things that we get asked a lot is, you know, well, what, it, what is a ShareFest exactly? You know, what is it going to include? What do they look like? And to be honest, they all look different. It's going to be kind of up to your community to, to design it with local flavor. Um, every event is going to, um, it's, it's not going to be regimented like a, a TED Talk. Um, or something else. Every single one is going to have different activities and it's, it's really just going to be representative of what your community has to offer. Um, and what participants bring to it because it's not just going to be based on you know, the organizers or the speakers, but really it's, it's everybody involved. Um, but just kind of give some, a, a few um, kind of examples of what your ShareFest could have. Um, one thing is that your ShareFest can provide kind of open space for visioning and brainstorming and, and planning co to collaboratively create a city with shared food or housing, work, finance, health, art, transportation, energy, and more, almost more like a summit. Um, it could highlight existing sharing projects, organizations, and businesses, and government agencies in your community, um, and 
very similar to if any of you participated in the map jams, kind of just like that, kind of pulling from those maps that have already been made. Um, also, you can ask organizations to host workshops on relevant topics like creative reuse and repair, you know, how to start a housing, food, or worker co-op, or a co-working space, you know, various forms of resource sharing like tool libraries, seed banks, and, and car sharing, community currencies like time banks, um, cooperative child care, urban fruit cleaning, soft skills of sharing, and it kind of goes on. It, it can kind of evolve and and it's really going to be one of those things that you're going to want to pull from your community. You're going to want to reach out to, you know, if there is a transition town network in your community and see if maybe they want, want to offer a, a skill share and table, you know, reach out to these people that are already doing these things um, because they do them best. And then the idea is just really to pull that whole, whole community together and make it as experiential as possible. Um, you know, with a repair cafe or, you know, a bike kitchen, some sort of trash to treasure creation station, um, really free markets, gift circles or potlucks where people can exchange recipes. Um, there's, a, there's many different ways to make them interactive. And um, looking into Center for a New American Dreams guide on how to share and also on Shareable, we have a whole series of how-to guides on how to coordinate activities just like that. And, let's see, i got to change my slide. Sorry about that, everybody. Technical difficulties on the... There, thank you. Um, can you actually change the next one? Great. So it's it's one of the things that um, is really important is to is to plan ahead, but not only plan ahead, but to make sure that you're designing your event with three ethos in mind, um, and that would be maximum participation, maximum visibility, and maximum connection. Um, just to make and if you set if you set up all those those three and you're successful at those three things then you're going to be well on your way to having a very successful event that, that is impactful for your community. So let's just break that down a little bit and look at maximum participation. And ideally, this is coming from, a, from diverse sectors of your community, especially those with low income, who we're going to want to invite and bring into the, the fold, and, and often because they're early ado adopters of a sharing economy, because they're folks of lower income are, are needing these services or are needing this connection because their needs aren't being met by, you know, the traditional economy. And so this can, you know, to do this, it's important to include partners from, from these diverse communications uh, communities as early as possible. Um, bringing, bringing all the different players to the table that you can so that everybody feels like they have a chance to add and participate and, and shape the, the event. Um, it's also important to include a diversity of programming aimed not just at adults, but also at children and those from various socioeconomic and geographic areas in your community. And, and it's also important to make sure that the location you choose for your, share, for your share fest is accessible. And that can both be, you know, wheelchair accessible and, and for those that are altered abled, but also uh, geographically accessible uh, with public transportation and both bike and, and car parking and making sure that actually people can get in. As far as maximum visibility, it's important to choose a location for your event where you can get walk-in traffic. And this can either be done you know, in a public place or a hall where people are used to going, but it also can be um, jumping in and partnering with another uh, organization that's already putting on an event, you know, with your city, you know, m jumping in on a, a much larger event that already has a built-in audience, and then carving out an area where you can kind of promote the sharing economy that's inside your community in that space, be that kind of hub as just another one of the, the larger attractions for a big event. Um, and also just making sure to advertise your event well in advance, but in a diversity of locations and ways. Not everybody reads the newspaper, not everybody's on Facebook, and it's important to try and reach, meet people in your community where they are. 
And then finally, building for maximum connection. And this is the thing that's going to really propel your city, you know, becoming a sharing city, you know, creating these networks that will be much longer lasting after the ShareFest itself. And these ShareFests should encourage and strengthen your community. In addition to shared experience, it is important that participants not only engage with the programming, but also with each other. And so set aside some time and a location for community dialogue, for open space, etc., cetera, um, where people can do those networks and connections and find out about who has what and, and how they're going to want to move forward. And this is where you know, ideas for, for new projects can generate. Um, and then the final thing is just be sure to include programming that is, that is really interactive, but also participant driven. And so that people feel as if they um, have a chance to, to bring what they have to the table um, in workshops or, or, um, or just in general open space activities. Can you change the uh, slide? So, Moving forward uh, with these ShareFests, we're going to get to hear from others that have, that have helped to coordinate ShareFests in the past, but we also have a lot of resources that are available. Um, in the last couple of weeks, um, we released a, a, uh, a toolkit um, that people have already started to um, utilize uh, in, their, in their planning, and it's, and it's kind of very, it's, it's, it explains a lot of the stuff that I've just talked about. And um, it'll kind of get you going. I'm going to put this. Uh, oh, it, I was going to try and chat it, but it won't let me chat it. So we're going to send out uh, the toolkit to everybody um, after the after the event is over when we kind of send out this recording. And so you'll be able to get the toolkit. We also have a tool. What I'm referring to is a toolbox. And this toolbox is currently in development but it will be coming out uh, next week, and it will be specifically going to people who sign up to coordinate ShareFests. And um, this toolkit includes kind of a list of frequently asked questions, um, has the back-end spreadsheets for keeping track of presenters and activities and volunteers, uh, basic finances, scheduling, everything, uh, participation surveys that you can send out to, to as you're promoting your event to uh, invite people to, to participate in various different ways, um, various application forms for presenters, for, you know, for volunteers, a how-to media guide on, on how to get media for your event that kind of walks through the whole process, um, sample schedules, and, um, and then also a series of sample emails that will go out you know, before the event, uh, to, to people who are participating, um, sign-in sheets, organization exhibitor feedback forms, and various how-to guides that are appropriate. So this is, um, that toolbox is, is really set up to get people going and um, support you all for success. We also have a series of, we have a couple of uh, Facebook groups, one of which is for the Sharing Cities Network, which is open to everybody. And the other one is just specifically for organizers uh, of ShareFest, so we can post questions and, and share best practices. And so as people sign up for that, um, to become um, ShareFest organizers, you're going to be able to get, you'll, you'll be invited to participate in that, in that Facebook group. And then we also are going to be doing monthly Google Hangouts to, to answer larger questions and then are available for individual support. And you can see my email up there, tom at shareable.net, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that come up for you. As well as we're going to do a, a Q&A towards the uh, end where we're going to be able to answer um, questions right away. Cool. Thanks so much, Tom. Um, uh, those of you who um, can see the chat box, um, we actually did chat out um, some links here to the uh, toolkit and also the Facebook groups that he mentioned. Um, but as Tom mentioned, you will be emailed all of this information as well. So um, uh, don't worry about missing it all right now. And so thanks, Tom, for the overview of ShareFest. Um, now we would like to actually give you some examples of um, actual ShareFests that have happened. Um, and that's where um, Angelo and Ryan come in. So right now, uh, the first person that's going to be talking about their experiences is Angelo Muhlman, uh, and he will be talking about uh, his experiences. 
organizing Sharefest Ghent and Antwerp. So go ahead, Angelo. Hello, uh, good morning or good evening. Actually, it's evening for me. Um, I've done it already three times together with uh, two partner organizations. We organized, orga organized Sharefest in Belgium. Um, the first time we did it in Ghent, it was two years ago, uh, or three years already, um, and it was born like an alternative motor show. It, it was during the mobi mobility week, it was with a budget from the transport minister, so there was a strong focus on shared mobility. It was a motor show for shared cars, and as the, the big motor show in Belgium is always opened by our king or the main prince, um, this motor show was opened by the non-official daughter of our king. Uh, so the lady who's cutting uh, the lint, she's the non-official daughter. That was nice, but um, it was the first time it was not so such uh, a success. Uh, but we decided to go on with the share fest because we really believed in the idea of a share fest. And the second time we did it in Antwerp. Uh, we, we organized the event uh, during the Car Free Sunday. And that was a very good choice because there, many people were already in the city spending time there with their bikes, uh, walking in the city. So there, this was a really good choice to, to organize it on the Car Free Sunday. That was in Antwerp. Uh, it was opened by the mayor of Antwerp. Um, and the third time we went back to Ghent. It's all uh, in Flanders. It's really close to each other, half an hour from each other, the cities. Um, and the third time, uh, there were much more people already, of course. Um, what we have learned during those three events, uh, the first time it was just, a, it was an evening. There was nothing else going on. It was, uh, okay. It was really difficult. There were no many vi visitors. Um, Actually, there was no interaction. It was only information that, that it was a boring event. Some people came by and they, okay, they, they, they left the place 50 minutes later. So, um, it, but another thing which was nice, it was a parody on a motor show and that's uh, okay. That, that was something nice. Uh, but we've learned a lot. And the last time, uh, during the Carfi Sunday, so many visitors came to our city. Uh, there was a lot of interaction and, and the event became, it was not just a parody anymore. It was a really self-conscious -con event. Um, it, it was really a share fest. So you can see the, the picture of Ghent. So if you like, you can Google Ghent. Uh, it's a nice city. Um, <clears throat> so that's a picture taken um, in the beginning of the share fest last time in Ghent. So you see already uh, many more visitors. It was just in the beginning. And what you can see, we, we are not only showing um, uh, shared mobility services, but we are just offering a nice event. Um, we, we were paying attention to children. There was animation for children. That was nice. It was fun, the event. Um, the decision that we that we made was, uh, was to give the floor to a local politician, um, even if he was not supporting so much the event, but if you give the opportunity to a politician, he will make a positive opinion on the sharing economy. Um, and it was the start in Ghent probably to become a, um, a sharing city or a shareable city. Um, so that was the, the city uh, councillor for transport who opened uh, the event. And now he's really promoting shared mobility much more than ever before, but also other sharing initiatives. Um, by organizing a share fest, it's 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 nice. You can inform people, uh, you can show people what's going on in the city. But it's also it creates a momentum uh, for local or national media to or to talk about the sharing economy. Um, in the newspaper and on television, there was really the, f uh, the first time that they were really uh, giving um, attention to the sharing economy in Belgium. Um, Okay, don't make it boring. Give people the chance to see something, to do something. And a very nice thing uh, we, we've done the last time for the first time was a repair cafe. It's um, a concept already in, uh, promoted by Shareable in the United States also, I guess. Um, it's uh, to, to repair uh, tools uh, by some volunteers. We could not organize it all by ourselves, uh, but 
we, we ask a local organization to organize a Repay Café during the share fest. So there, that was not work for us. We didn't have to look for the, um, the, the people who could repair those tools. So, but it, it was nice to have it over there. Um, so that's another picture from repairing stuff. Um, of course, it'd be nice if you organize something and uh, open a bar. So there, there was a bar. It, the, the weather was sunny. It was, uh, it was not share spring, but it was more the Indian summer. It was in September. Um, <clears throat> but you could not uh, ask for one drink. You always had to ask two drinks. So it was happy hour all the time. You always had to share drinks. Um, okay, that's another picture showing that it was fun. Uh, you could also, there was some cook workshop on a bike. Uh, um, children were over there. There were also uh, some swapping initiatives. You could do some book swapping. Um, the year before we did uh, a clothes swapping with a fashion show of, um, of second-hand uh, clothes. So that was uh, also great. Probably the next time we will organize it again, a fashion show. That's me in the middle of the picture. I'm working for Taxi Stop. Uh, Taxi Stop is a non-profit organization enabling sharing already since the 70s. So I'm involved in ride sharing programs and car sharing, but also home swapping. Um, but we, we are enabling sharing, but also promoting doing campaigns like a car free day, but also the share fest together with uh, two other organizations. Um, there, this, uh, there was co-housing promoted and co-housing is really uh, a hot item in the news, but many people don't really know what it is co-housing. So that was an opportunity to be informed about co-housing. Um, <clears throat> and there's something important, I guess, you have many bigger plays, big, the biggest marketplace, I think in, like in the United States, you have the zip cars, uh, you have uh, Airbnb. It's nice because even the biggest marketplaces are not so well known, uh, but of course you should pay uh, as much attention to local initiatives uh, and things which are going on in neighborhoods. I think it's fine. It's good to find a good balance between those different initiatives. Um, okay, you know, couch surfing. Uh, we invited someone from the local couch sur surfing community to <laughs> to bring his couch to the event. Um, that as we were born like, like an alternative motor show, of course, there were many shared cars from some peer-to-peer -peer initiatives, um, but also from, uh, from a, a fleet owning company, um, even competitors of Taxi Stop. We have uh, also a car sharing uh, company, but uh, we invited competitors also. So it's not the moment to be afraid of competition, uh, especially on such an event. Um, the next day in the newspaper, paper, I've read something uh, from a journalist. Um, I was a little bit surprised, but it was a very good remark. Uh, he told us that it looks like sharing is only for smartphone owners. Um, and actually, that, that was a remark I've heard during the event also. And that, that will be uh, very much important the next time that we are looking for initiatives that also open for people who are not used to, to, uh, to use smartphones. Uh, and I think there are enough initiatives you can show. Um, that's our car sharing company. Um, so next year we will, uh, normally in July, we will organize a share fest. It will be an evening event in Brussels. Uh, it will be in the shadow of the Brussels parliament. So it, it will, we will try to raise some European political uh, awareness on sharing. And then in September, during the Carfee Sunday, it's as part of the Mobility Week, we will organize the next workshop in Mechelen. And I think I've seen a question already if, uh, if um, a share fest works for rural communities. Uh, actually, I don't really know if rural, what the definition of it, but the Belgian cities, the Flemish cities aren't that big. Um, Mechelen has 100,000 inhabitants, Ghent 250,000 inhabitants. So we are not Chicago or New York or LA, uh, we are a small city. But uh, if you have enough passion of people who like to organize that kind of things, I think you can do it everywhere. <clears throat> so if you like to know more, of course, you can contact, uh, you can find information of Shareable, but don't hesi ever hesitate to contact me directly, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Angelo, for that great presentation. Um, I'm gonna just go back to just in case people are writing down your contact information. Um, 
So uh, Angelo uh, just showed some excellent pictures from uh, ShareFest Ghent and ShareFest Antwerp from previous years. Um, if you uh, have questions for Angelo, go ahead and type them into the chat box. And uh, after our, uh, our last presentation, we will um, dive into the Q&A questions. Okay, so our next presenter is Ryan Gourley and he's hailing from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, he's gonna tell a little bit about his, his experience organizing Ann Arbor the Ann Arbor Sharing Summit. And of course, if you have questions during Ryan's presentation, please feel free to type in your questions into the chat box so that we have lots of questions to ask during Q&A. Okay, so Ryan, take it away. Yeah. All right, thanks, Wen, and thank you, Angelo. That, uh, the pictures were great, and it looked like a really cool event. Um, yeah, so as Wen mentioned, my name is Ryan. I'm the founding director of A2Share, uh, which is a community organization to build and support the sharing economy of the Ann Arbor area. Um, and that was sort of established in tandem with um, organizing our first sharing summit. So yeah, I'm happy to share my experience organizing a share fest here and some of the insights I've picked up along the way. Uh, I'm going to focus a little more on like the logistics, uh, things I know now that I wish I knew then. Um, and uh, to give a brief overview up front, uh, we'll talk about getting organized, reaching out, documenting the event, and looking forward. Can I get next slide, please? Um, all right, so first, getting organized. Uh, so here in Ann Arbor, we, uh, we have a famous saying, courtesy of a, a football coach, of course, and that it's all about the team, the team, the team. Um, in the case of organizing a share fest, at least, I don't think that could be any truer. Uh, pulling off a community event is not something most people can or want to do alone, <laughs> and doing so is sort of uh, sort of antithetical to the idea of a whole collaborative community event. As I think Amy had pointed out in the chat box, um, you really cannot nor want to do this alone. Um, so I'd say the first order of business is getting a solid team together to help. Of course, um, it's important to put together a team that's organized and dedicated to the overall mission, uh, but also one that you can have fun with and that you genuinely enjoy uh, because you'll you'll need that to put on a fun event and and ultimately you'll especially need that to fall back on when uh, when you know it's crunch time and the going gets tough um, so we found that meetings over food and drink helped <laughs> um, it's probably easiest and most fruitful to start in your immediate peer group um, that said I'd highly recommend reaching out beyond that and getting new people and ideas involved um, I was in the fortunate position of being a student in an environmental studies program, so it wasn't too difficult to find a group of friends who are also interested in issues around uh, responsible resource use and localization, sharing economies. Um, on the flip side, I was in the less enviable position of being relatively new to Ann Arbor and more broadly to working in this particular space. So at that time, I didn't personally know or have many connections to permanent residents who are already active. Um, so it involved a lot of cold calls, um, which is something you may find yourself needing to do as well. So I just want to um, assuage any fears that it is possible to, you know, uh, start from ground zero and build this up. Um, I'll talk a bit about reaching out to new people next, but first I want to mention on a technical note for getting organized, I'd highly recommend making use of some of the cloud services available for sharing documents. Um, that includes Google Drive, uh, SkyDrive, Box, Dropbox. Uh, when you're working on putting together plans with several others for an event like this, it can just make things much easier than constantly emailing documents back and forth or you know, having just one person be responsible for a particular document. Uh, can I get next slide, please? All right, uh, so reaching out. Um, First, perhaps before you reach out, you might think about creating a presence on the web. That way, when you do contact people, if they have more questions or want to learn more before you know signing up for anything, they can refer to your site or sites and find out more. And you know, sh sure, setting up the website or Facebook fit or Facebook page um, or whatever may take some additional time and effort, but I truly believe it's worth it in terms of the time it will save in answering questions via email back and forth. Um, you know that old saying, uh, stitch in time saves nine. Uh, and it also lends some legitimacy to the event. It says, uh, yes, <laughs> cautious reader, this is actually happening. It's a thing. You won't show up and be the only one there. Um, 
So before we reached out to too many people, we created a Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn page, and a website. Um, and you can make free websites using uh, Wix, that's W-I-X, or Weebly, or, or WordPress. Um, and then we also created an event on Facebook to help get the word out. Uh, we found that Facebook events are nice because lots of people are on it, and the more people interact with the event page, the more visibility it gets. Um, one of the downsides is you can only invite your friends, so you'll want to list everyone on the organizing team as hosts, uh, so they can each invite their friends as well. And of course, in settings, you'll probably want to make it possible for guests to invite their friends. Um, it also is nice because it gives you a rough estimate of how many people you might expect. Um, emphasis on rough. Uh, in my experience, uh, you have to take Facebook uh, RSVPs with a grain of salt. Um, let's see, then we also set up an Eventbrite page, uh, and that's a little more formal. Uh, not as many people are using it, but the nice part of it is uh, those RSVPs are, tend to be a little more um, uh, bankable and they allow you to track RSVPs. I believe you can also capture emails and send out reminder emails. Um, and then you can also set a ticket price if the event isn't free or if, if there's some portion of it that isn't free. And uh, you can accept donations as well via that site. Um, and then we also put up the event on nextdoor.com, which if you have that going in your community, I'd highly recommend using that and posting to that. Um, I think that a lot of people who are already interested and engaged in sharing and may not know it um, would be uh, on next door um, so there's an audience already growing there um, now of course the caveat to having all these different places on the web is you have to update each of them if the details of the event change so just be aware of that um, that said I still think it's uh, more than worth it in terms of uh, efficiency and, and the legitimacy it lends um, okay, so now on to reaching out to people. Uh, first, we made a list of organizations in the area who we thought were relevant, uh, and we introduced ourselves and sort of our vision or plan for the day, and then we both invited them to participate and asked for their help in spreading the word. Um, given that we didn't know a lot of people in the wider community at that point, uh, most of these, like I said, were cold calls. Uh, you know, but in our experience, most people expressed interest and wanted to participate in whatever way they could. Uh, so we, we had a standard template for each audience, um, whether it was an individual invitee or an organization we were inviting to participate. And then within that, we personalized to the degree that, that made sense. So often it was just a matter of changing the greeting in a couple of sentences to tailor it to that particular re recipient. Um, and then we also sought out sponsors, um, so like organizations or departments um, were, were connected to a university here so we could uh, reach out to university departments uh, who might partner with us and, and those were strategic partnerships. Um, it allows for some co-branding and cross-promoting, you know, it gets their name attached to a cool event uh, that uh, they might have similar interests in and, and then of course having their name and presence there again lend some legitimacy to, uh, to, your, to your event. Um, and then finally, you'll want to be sure to put your event on community calendars um, and reach out to the media as well so it's on their radar. All right, can I get next slide? Um, OK, so documenting the event, I'll just say two quick things about this. Um, the first is you'll want to be able to say afterwards what happened, you know, who came, how many, what they learned, what it was like, et cetera, et cetera. So what we did is we had attendees fill out a brief survey um, and ask questions like, uh, what is your prior familiarity with sharing? What were your major takeaways? Uh, how did you find out about this? Stuff like that. Um, I'd say if you're organized and it's brief and well designed, it's probably not too difficult to get most people to fill it out. Um, but one idea you might consider, uh, which is what we did, is incentivizing people to fill it out. So we handed people the survey at the door and let them know that if they filled it out, it would be their entry into a raffle for giveaways. So that was just kind of a nice, fun way for people to get more involved, to maybe win a cool prize, and for us to collect some data. Um, and again, uh, that's where our sponsors and some of the participating organizations were able to help us out, is with those prizes. Um, and then, 
of course, you'll also want to take photos and, and perhaps even video. Um, that's useful to share with your target audience, um, get people interested and involved after the fact, um, as well as the media, and of course, any sponsors or partners. Um, you know, if someone happens to know a photographer, great, bring them in, but really, even a few cell phone pics are, are better than nothing here. All right, next slide, please. All right, um, so yeah, looking forward. Uh, first, while it's still fresh in your mind, you'll want to debrief with the team. Um, you know, you'll want to discuss what went well, what could go better next time, what the next steps are for, for growing your local movement. Um, and again, that's probably best done over a celebratory meal or drink. You know, at this point, you can exhale, you did it. <laughs> um, next, you'll want to share what happened and some of the takeaways with your new audience. Um, hopefully, you were able to collect some emails at the event, so you'll have a uh, subscriber list, a uh, list of people that you can start reaching out to um, to get involved in future happenings. Um, and then also share it with the media. Um, you know, at this point you're probably exhausted and just want to be done with this for a while and I can't fault you for that, but I think it's really valuable to follow up as soon as possible afterwards. Um, in our experience there was a lot of energy and enthusiasm after the event and it'd just be a shame to let that die out. So try to harness it while you can and let it feed these future projects, keep the ball rolling. Um, we, we did end up kind of taking a few weeks off afterwards, um, in part because, uh, as I mentioned, it was mostly a group of students and it was the start of the semester for us. Um, but we then picked things up again and we're trying to keep that energy going by holding monthly meetups, um, which was actually uh, the suggestion of several attendees at the summit that we received, um, both in person and via our survey. Um, so some of the things we've done, we've done like potlucks, uh, movie screening, um, most recently we had a clothing swap, and this year we've also set up a student group to hopefully give it more visibility and sustainability on campus. And then uh, finally, remember the team, the team, the team. Um, it's important to keep nurturing the team and one another and, and keep in touch as things develop. Uh, so next one. Yeah, so that's all I have from my end. Um, yeah, speaking of keeping in touch, I'd be very glad to hear from anyone if they want to share their challenges and successes. Uh, you can find us on the web at those various locations. Um, if you just search A2Share, you will find us. Um, probably easy is to go to our website, which is a2share.org. And from there, you can connect with us on social media or subscribe to our newsletter. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, that was a great presentation. Um, and I also do want to thank the uh, Mira Luna, who is also from Shareable, and she's been answering a lot of questions in the chat field. So uh, thanks very much, Mira, for uh, chiming in on a lot of the questions that people have. So um, uh, you just heard from Angelo and uh, Ryan talking a little bit about their experiences organizing ShareFest in their communities. Um, if you have any questions that you would like us to ask during Q&A, uh, please do chat them into the chat box. And um, Anna from uh, Anna Owimbo is the uh, Director of Collaborative Communities Program at Center for a New American Dream. She's going to speak very briefly about uh, a program at New Dream called the Get Together Initiative where you can uh, meet other people um, in your community who might be uh, interested in helping to organize a ShareFest with you. So Anna, can you uh, talk a bit about this? Yeah, um, thanks, Len. Uh, this is Anna, and um, uh, I'm just going to speak for about a couple of minutes so that we have enough time for, for more questions at the end. Uh, you know, basically, a lot of what Ryan's been talking about and Tom's been talking about and, um, and everybody's been talking about the importance of having a really strong team when you start putting together any kind of event. And so one of the things that um, New Dream has done kind of in response to what we've been hearing from all of our members over time was they really want to find each other so that they can work together. And so we set up this um, platform called Get Together. Um, and it's G, uh, you can see it's uh, get 2 Together. And um, if you go to our website, 
um, www.newdream.org, uh, um, you can just click on the get together um, slide on the on our main homepage and um, just go in, register for get together, and that way you'll get regular updates. Um, you'll be able to link up with other people in your neighborhood or in the city where you live and basically start your own team or join an existing team. So you'll notice, um, you know, just briefly from the slide, you can see that um, right now we have teams in about 80 cities, um, some of them just getting started. Some of them have already held several events, um, you know, starting from last summer. And you can either start your own group or join one of the groups. And um, so I'd encourage you to really, you know, try and engage that way. It's a great way to start getting a share fest um, started. And I know that um, some of our regional coordinators um, around the country are already in the process of, um, of starting, starting teams um, to hold share fests, probably both of them early in May. Um, so basically, you know, I'd encourage everyone go sign up on the New Dream website and set yourself up to engage and um, find each other so that you can all um, join in and um, hold some really fantastic events around the country um, around sharing. Great. Thanks, yeah. Anna. Yep. Hope everyone joins the Get Together program if you are not already part of it. Um, I want to uh, dive into the Q&A so that we have uh, 10 minutes now to uh, ask some questions of our speakers. Um, the first question I want to ask <clears throat> came from Jane. And um, this is a question, I guess, for, uh, for both Ryan and Angelo um, and anyone from Shareable, which is how far in advance do you recommend starting to plan uh, the ShareFest? And how far in advance should you, you know, select the date? And um, um, how much time do you think people need to prepare and organize? So whoever sure. wants to I'll, go first. I'll jump in. Uh, this is Ryan. Um, I would say just as a general rule of thumb, the earlier the better. Um, uh, at least uh, try to give yourself a few months. Uh, that said, uh, we, the first one, uh, I don't think we had a place and a time locked in until about a month before. Uh, which I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. <laughs> it was a bit, it was a bit uh, scary. Uh, so I would do it earlier than that, but it is possible to do it in a month. Um, you know, that might be the difference though. We had at our first one about 75 attendees. Um, we could have a lot more attendees with a little bit more advanced notice. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, Angelo, your event is very large and inspiring. How, how long in advance do you start planning for that out of curiosity? Um, so it, it takes a lot of time to convince the city and if you need some support you need to convince them but in the beginning the first event it, 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 it took a long time to convince them but now it's it's changing a little bit as we want to organize every September and share fest in another city now the cities are, go, uh, are convincing us to come in their city so it's changing but that process takes a lot of time but once the decision is taken where you are going to organize the event, then it can go quite fast. Uh, it, but it all depends a little bit on, uh, on, the, on, on which team, the passion, the collaboration you have. Um, sometimes if you organize it together with different organization, organizations, the collaboration takes a lot of time. But it's, all, it's, it's nice also but that you, you need a lot of meetings if you organize it by yourself. You don't need to do so many meetings, but you, you need, uh, but that's okay. You should, you need other partners. So, but I, I think you can organize it in a couple of months. Um, I think the number of hours we spent to organize it was about 300 man hours. Um, but that's because it was organized in a professional way. Uh, and I mean, it was paid. It was as part of our work. You can also organize it with volunteers, I guess. I'm convinced that it will be as good with volunteers also. So. <clears throat> okay, great. Thanks, Angelo. Uh, so that's actually a good segue to a question that, uh, that Tony had asked, which was um, how many staff or volunteers uh, do you feel you need to put together a good share fest? I know there's different sizes of share fest, but um, Ryan, do you want to just go first and say how many people were actually involved in the organizing of the Ann Arbor Sharing Summit? Sure. Uh, in the first one, there was, a, it was about a team of five of us, you know, that was the core team. And then of course, um, you know, our 
partners and sponsoring organizations, I'd consider them also part of the larger organizing team. Um, you know, like when we when we figured out the venue, then that person, uh, the, the administrator we were working with, then became a very integral part to making sure it was a success. Um, so we had five people on our core organizing team, and uh, I think, again, that was uh, largely so small because we were all students and new to the community. At the event, we met a lot of people who uh, wanted to keep the momentum going and said they wanted to do it again. Um, and so uh, now I would say there's probably a group of 10 to 15 uh, people that I'm in contact with who um, are um, uh, earnestly dedicated to uh, doing this again. Uh, right now, for the second one, I'm working with a group of students. Um, there's five students on the team, and, and they are uh, they will be recruiting volunteers um, as well from both the local community and from uh, campus organizations who have like-minded goals. Mm -hmm. Cool, great. Uh, Angelo, how many people work together to put together your, your big uh, citywide events? To the organization, I think two or three people um, to really prepare it, but during the event you need a lot of people, of course, and that's um, you really need to convince enough people um, to help you during the event. Um, but you, you can do it, if, even you can do it on your own, behind your desk, you can organize a share fest. But of, of course, it's much better if you have some input from others and you work together with others. But the, the, the main challenge is during, during the event to have enough people. And I think during the share fest, you need 15 or 20 people to help you. We work together with the local uh, I think a youth uh, movement, a scouting group, actually scouting in Belgium is a little bit different than the United States, They're less conservative, more open. Um, so, and they helped us a lot for from some, uh, to open the bar, to build up the, uh, the tents, that kind of things. Mm -hmm. Cool. Tom, um, do you have any uh, advice or thoughts about, you know, how many people are needed to organize a successful share fest? I would say trying to build a team of at least three people. Um, that that's your tor that's your core group, and five is even better. Um, but a minimum of three. But again, that's for a, a large event, and we also want to stress that you know not everybody is going to be able to you know do an event like in Ghent or even a full sharing summit. You know, and, and not everybody's community will support that. And so for other communities, we would like to you know support people in doing a map jam um, if, they, if they haven't done one yet and mapping out their community's resources. And that can be a great first event or just doing a, you know, a skill share or trying to pull people together to actually just practice sharing. And so maybe you're in a rural community that, that won't support something this large, but you can bring people together for a seed swap, for a really, really free market, for some kind of a bike cafe or some mix of those. And it, everything is going to be very unique. And, and, and for an event like that, you know, then an individual could coordinate that sort of a, a specific uh, kind of share event. Uh, but again, you know, three to five people would always be better. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, we have a, another question uh, asking, uh, is there a list of existing communities in cities to check out who have done uh, these similar types of uh, share fest events? So, um, Tom, do you know if Shareable has a list like that available? Um, inside the toolkit, um, which we've sent out, there's a list of a handful of groups that have done these ShareFests. Um, calling it this is kind of a new thing, because there's been a lot of, like, skill shares and these ideas around summits around a new economy or, you know, a solidarity economy have, have existed for a long time. So there's a lot of examples around that. Um, but... This, this new movement of doing these kind of very integrational share fests um, is, is something that's still evolving. Gotcha. Great. Um, and, and lastly, I kind of want to just ask uh, um, all three of you, uh, what, what are some of like the most popular uh, events or activities that you've seen at ShareFest that really get people excited and, uh, and engaged? I'll go ahead. <laughs> uh, this is Ryan again. Um, one thing uh, we didn't do at the first one, but we will definitely be doing at the second one, is a, uh, a swap. We're talking about doing just a general item swap or thing swap. Uh, we held a clothing swap last uh, about a couple weeks ago, and 
we brought in almost 50 people and over 400 items of clothing and so the the team the students i'm working with who organized that they put it all together and they were just really impressed with how much uh visibility it got and how much people wanted to come and contribute and and take something home as well and so they decided that they'd like to do that on a bigger scale at the summit um another thing that was really popular is um the breakout sessions we had uh, at the first summit so they were just open space breakout sessions where people could uh, learn about a topic they could feel free to move from room to room uh, because they were running in concurrent sessions and so we had uh, uh, panels speak at each session and they were you know uh, one panel was on sharing food another on sharing housing one is sharing as a business one was sharing and legal implications so really you know you can uh, think up anything under the sun, but I think people really enjoyed that opportunity to dialogue with others and um, think about uh, what sharing looks like in their community and, and how they might help uh, shape it going forward. Hey, so uh, I, I, I agree. I agree with Ryan. Um, I think in, in Belgium, it's successful if you have interaction, if you can do something at the share fest. Uh, not only looking, but you really have to do something to swap to to get st uh, stuff repaired. Probably now I'm I'm having another idea for next um, share fest in Belgium uh, on some public spaces in Belgium. I think it exists in the United States also. We have uh, public pianos, um, and e uh, even if you if you just put it in the middle of the event, uh, a piano. Um, the people just will play on it. It will bring some some nice. Um, it will be nice, I think. So that kind of things you you need to do. Not only informing, but enough interaction. That's a great idea. I love the idea of the piano. <laughs> um, we're gonna uh, we're getting to the end of the webinar. But before you all leave, I wanted. Uh, Tom, to just reiterate what are some next steps and uh, more resources that you can uh, take advantage of to organize a ShareFest. Tom? Yeah, so, um, you know, we've got this toolkit that's gone out that's there to support you. Um, we sent out, and right after I finished talking, I put up a link and we can put up another one for just signing up to coordinate a ShareFest. Um, there's a survey that kind of shows, that lets us know where you are, what you're interested in, and if you fill that out, we're going to get back to you. And then we can start, we're going to start sending out uh, these, uh, they're going to be Google folders um, that are, that are the, the toolbox. So you will get your own folder of all these unique uh, docs. And those are going to start going out tomorrow um, to groups that have signed up. So we want to encourage people to get in there. If you want to get in touch with me, you can send an email to me at tom at charitable.net. Or if you're working with New Dream as a get-together group that wants to do your own share fest, contacting Anna, and she can rope you in and help uh, kind of support you through the process. Um, and join, join these, these Facebook groups. Uh, the Sharing Cities uh, Network is, the, is a good first one. And then for organizers, we're going to get everybody wrapped into those. And we'll just keep going through and support everybody through the process. Perfect. Thanks so much, Tom. Um, so I want to thank everyone for joining us on our webinar today. Um, we heard some great information and inspirational stories about what ShareFest can be. Um, I want to thank everyone for their time um, and for making your city more shareable. Um, I hope that you all are leaving today with some uh, inspiration and ideas on what you can do and how you can get more resources to get involved. So on behalf of the entire team at Shareable and Center for a New American Dream, thank you for joining us for our webinar. Uh, if you registered for the webinar, we will email you with follow-up resources, including the toolkit and the recording and the slides from this webinar. So I hope everyone has an excellent day and good luck organizing your ShareFest. Big thanks to all of our speakers, Tom, Angelo, and Ryan. And thank you to all of you. Goodbye. <laughs>